After 15 years of working as a designer, I gotta admit that I did a bunch of mistakes. So here are five things that I wish someone would have told me. I think that these five things would have saved me a lot of time and hopefully it's going to save you some time. The first one is on the topic of leveling up and how to do it right. For me, I got started by learning about Photoshop and Illustrator before even taking on a project. But even if this was only the beginning, the way I set out to go about it was not ideal. So here is the first mistake that I did. I decided to start doing freelancing and work alone instead of joining a team. I worked as a freelancer for about six years. In the beginning, I had some good momentum and I was learning a lot, but I was feeling after a year or two that I stopped progressing. And that's because I didn't have any designers near me that could challenge my ideas or provide any feedback on how I was doing things. Creating work without getting any kind of feedback from designers that are doing it at a higher level made the quality of my work plateau really quickly. When it changed it was actually when I got hired at a company where there were multiple roles where I can learn from and I feel that being able to work with different designers and seeing the way they do their thing helped me increase my skill a lot within a very short period of time. If I could start all over I would first try to learn the basics of the tool that I want to do or the field that I want to get in and then apply for internships or junior positions in companies that are already doing the kind of work that you want to do and if joining a team is not something that you want to do right now that's fine but I do recommend trying to connect with other designers whether that's through slack communities on trying to find mentors on LinkedIn I'll leave a link in the description with some slack communities that you can join and maybe that way you can reach out to designers and figure out how you can continuously improve the next point is don't believe everything that you see on Dribbble or Behance. When I started out in design, I used to go on Dribbble and Behance and check portfolio pieces from different artists or designers and would just feel bad because the process was so simple to understand and yet I couldn't really follow that process to get to the work that I was doing. However, as I worked more and more with clients, I realized that a lot of portfolio pieces aren't actually examples of how it actually went down or at least the process isn't truthful. For example, for web design projects, I'm sure that you've all seen wireframes that match perfectly with the final result. And it might look like it was so easy to get to that result. However, in real projects, even if you have a structure in your mind, you still have to move things around and figure things out and see what works with what. Getting to a final result usually involves getting feedback from multiple people and doing a lot of iterations, but the final result would look very different than what you started with. So whatever you see in portfolios is actually a curated process. Designers put together these case studies just to show their expertise and trying to alleviate some of the anxieties of the clients and show that they can get to a result very easily, which makes websites like Dribble like a fashion show. The work that's there is influential, is trendy, but you shouldn't compare yourself with that work, especially if you're doing real client work. The next point is that the industry that you're in is always going to change. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think that if you're in the beginning of your career you actually have an advantage because you have the time to actually learn new tools and be more open to new types of opportunities so even if you want to join a market that's absolutely stacked with designers i think that you actually have the advantage especially compared with someone who has been doing this for a while they will actually be less inclined to actually challenge themselves and try to learn new things even the thing that you're going to choose as your career just know that that's going to evolve as well when i first got started graphic design was really popular there were a lot of opportunities even in printing but a lot of those things actually got commoditized so for example doing logo work with the rise of ai especially is going to be very hard to be a beginner designer and try to find clients that are willing to pay you money for something that can be done in a few minutes with a few AI tools. I'll try to figure out what are some of the jobs that are more future-proof than others and try to focus on those ones. For example, I still think that product design or UI UX will still need a lot of input from humans compared with other types of services, which I think will pretty much be very assisted or even replaced by AI. So even if I'm talking a lot about AI, I'm just trying to let you know that even if you're learning something now it's going to probably change but it's actually an immense opportunity for you to try to figure out for example how you can be the one that's designing with AI with its help and being one of the first designers that actually do that type of work compared to someone who's been in the industry for like 20 years and isn't willing to do that. 
Going deep instead of going wide is a concept that I first saw in one of Chris Doe's videos from the future, but that video is so old that I couldn't find it anymore, so I'm going to try to explain it. The basic concept is that if you're going to focus on one particular thing and you're going to put a lot more effort into that one thing instead of being spread out and doing multiple things at the same time, the difference in output or progress is going to be immense. Now I know how hard it is to focus on just one thing just because when I got started, I wanted to try anything and everything and that's a good thing but it's very easy to get sidetracked and just continue on that path instead of going deep in a particular direction and actually having success. What I wish someone would have told me is to stop after a while and put my thoughts on paper and put in what are my impressions of what I just tried and make a decision on what I want to focus on moving forward. Making this decision quickly is actually going to save you a lot of time if you're able to do it. When you're just beginning, you might think that you need to do anything and everything as a designer and you're going to probably rationalize it that this is actually going to give you an advantage in the market. But after working in different companies and with different clients, you realize that the biggest opportunities come from being specialized in one thing and finding a company or a project that needs your particular input into it. That's how you're going to make the most money and you're going to land the biggest opportunities of your career. I've hired a lot of designers and believe me, when I'm hiring for a specific role, it's really hard for someone who's a generalist, who knows a bit of everything, to be on the same level of competition with someone who's specialized in that particular thing. One of my favorite topics to talk about is about working for free and I would like to share my thoughts on this and hopefully it's going to help you. I'm not sure if you know, but working for free is usually looked down in the design field. Most people will say that you should never work for free. And I agree if you put in a lot of money into your education, but if you're self-taught and starting off with nothing, like no, no portfolio pieces, I say be open to work for free. I think that one of the reasons why other designers don't want other people to work for free is just because that's going to make it harder to compete in the market. But again, I don't agree with this. I believe that if you're already a professional who's making money out of design, your competition shouldn't be people that work for free. If someone who wants to do this thing for free and can produce do the same impact it's up to you to either level up or move up market and just ask for more money so if you're in this case where you're considering working for free i would say don't feel any shame about it especially if you want to gain some experience and put together your first portfolio pieces the key is to only do it for a short while because there will be people out there that will take advantage of you if you're going to work for free they're going to come back and ask for more projects for free so my advice there would be to come up with the price after the first project. So if you do a project that's for free, the second project should be paid, which I know is very hard to ask for money. Asking for money is actually a skill that you develop. It's not something that somebody is good at it from the start. And if you're not comfortable with asking for money, I recommend just doing the exercises of saying the number in the mirror until you feel comfortable with it. That way, when the question comes, how much for this you can say it and sound confident in it especially in the beginning uh, when i was working on projects sometimes they would ask me how much would it cost for me to work on this project and i would either come back with what's your budget or something more hesitant where i would say we'll figure it out along the way but as i started to have more experience i would just say the number right away and that would actually alleviate so much anxiety from the client side and my side just because we know what we're working with and it just makes everyone's day easier so i hope that all of these tips are going to save you some time and some headache and if you stayed until now i'd appreciate if you can like this video so more people can see it and subscribe for more don't forget to join the waitlist for my upcoming course on design and how to land a job in design and if you join the waitlist you're going to be the first that knows about it and get the discount code thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one. Bye!